Hey y'all, our video today is all about histograms, okay? I'm going to be using the notes and filling those in that were posted with this assignment on Google Classroom. Here's what they look like. So make sure you print those out and have them ready to go if you are able. Let's start chatting. This right here is a histogram. It looks a bit like a bar graph. We're gonna talk about some of the differences though between a histogram and a bar graph. So it says a histogram is a type of graph used to display data. We're still talking about lists of data. As I said, a histogram looks similar to a bar graph, but they are not the same. Let's talk about some differences. First step, histograms show data that has been organized into equal intervals. So the example at the end of this line, one to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, you see the intervals down here, five to six, seven to eight. So these bars aren't representing just one thing. They're representing data within this interval or within this range, okay? Let's talk about the bars themselves. Histogram bars touch with no spaces. Notice there are no spaces between the bars and there are no spaces before or after the bars inside the graph. Histogram bars are equal widths. Okay, we don't have some super skinny and some super fat. They are all the same width, okay? Next up, you can see that those bars are shaded, okay? Now, let's talk about the outside of our histogram here. This is called the horizontal axis, and this is called the vertical axis. And it says each axis should be labeled in two ways. First up, with numbers. On the bottom is where you will put your interval numbers, and on the side is where you will count up to wherever you need to count to, to include all of your data. This one counted by 10, so in order to help specify where each of their bars stops, they put these little numbers at the top. Those little numbers won't always be there. Usually you'll be able to tell based on the line the bar stops at which number it represents. Right? The other way you might notice our axes are labeled is with words. I need to know what those numbers represent. The labels on this histogram tell me that these numbers represent the number of children who visited the zoo on this uh, chart, and that down here is their ages, okay? Labels are super important, just like they always are in math, okay? Now, down here at the bottom are the steps to creating a histogram, okay? You draw your horizontal and vertical axes and put a title. You label your axes. Remember, label them with, in two ways. First is with numbers, the second is with words. And then draw and shade your bars, making sure they are equal sizes and touching. You're usually going to have a frequency table or a little chart like this one at the bottom that contains your data. You can get a lot of information from your histogram from this table, okay? I can get my title, I get my intervals, I get my words that I can use to label my axes, and then of course I get my data. These numbers tell me um, where my bars should stop. So if I were you, um, go ahead and stop the video for a couple of minutes. See if you can make a histogram on your own using this data here on the notes, and then join me back in a few minutes to check your histogram with mine and to go over a few last things. All right, hopefully you've made your histogram. I'm going to make mine over here following these steps, and you can see how you did. First step is draw my two axes and put a title. So I'm just gonna draw kind of what looks like a big L and I'm gonna get the title right here from this table. Math quiz scores. All right. Next it says to label my axes with numbers, okay? Well, on the left side over here, I see that my data is between one and four. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, Four. I'm drawing lines all the way across so that I have lines like they had on the one at the top of the notes where my bars are going to stop. That is zero at the bottom, one, two, three, and four. Now I have five intervals here, so that means I need room on my histogram for five bars. So I need to plan my space out. I don't want to make the first one really fat and have to make the rest really skinny. I need to make sure they're about the same. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna extend these a little bit further and draw the outside edge there. 
okay? I might have extended them a little bit too much, but that's okay, it's not a huge deal. Then I put my intervals here where my bars are gonna go 16 to 18, 19 to 21, 22 to 24, 25 to 27, and 28 to 30. So I've labeled my axes with numbers. Now I need to label them with words. I can just get those words straight from my table. My intervals represent the scores on the math quiz. And then these numbers on the side are the number of students who got those scores. Now I'm ready to put my bars. 16 to 18 only goes up to one. Make sure it's shade. It doesn't have to be perfect. 19 to 21 goes up to two. 22 to 24 goes up to three. And then my last two both go up to four. So I'm gonna split this pretty evenly there. I'll help fix that line at the bottom there. Now my bars aren't all perfectly the same width, but they're pretty close. I don't have any that are super skinny next to ones that are super fat. Notice also all my bars are touching. There's no space in between and there's no space inside the lines either at the very beginning of my histogram or at the end. Now, your Google Forms assignment today is not gonna have you making any histograms. It's going to have you answering questions about histograms and their data. So for example, on this histogram we just made about math quiz scores, I could ask something like how many students scored between a 19 and a 21? Well, that particular bar goes up to two, so that would be two students. I could ask how many students scored 25 or higher? Well, that would include both of these bars. So I would need their total, four plus four would be eight. So eight students scored 25 or higher. It might ask a question like how many students scored less than 22? Be careful on the wording, less than 22 doesn't include 22, it would just be these two bars here. So two plus one is three, so three students scored less than 22. The questions on your Google Forms assignment will be just to help make sure that you understand how to read the information that a histogram displays. All right, so head on back to Google Classroom. If you need to look over your notes again or go over a few things, that's totally fine. If you need to watch the video again, do that and then complete that Google Form so I can make sure you know what you need to know about histograms. Bye y'all.